The nature and distribution of cold environments. If we have a look at the world today, cold environments include the polar areas. These are areas of permanent ice, such as the Greenland ice sheet and the Antarctic ice sheet. Neighbouring these polar areas are the periglacial or tundra areas. Um, these are at the edge of the permanent ice. They have frozen ground or permafrost, and they include Siberia, subarctic Canada and Alaska. We have mountainous areas that have cold environments because of the high altitude, especially in winter. And those include the Rockies, the Sierra Madre, Andes, Alps, Hindu Kush and the Himalayas. The final areas that are cold environments are glaciers themselves. Uh, these are the rivers of frozen ice that are found in alpine regions and at the edges of polar ice sheets. So this map shows the current distribution of cold environments across the world. If we look at the past though, um, the distribution of cold environments has varied. Over the last two million years or during the Pleistocene epoch, and to be specific, the Pleistocene epoch, epoch was from 1.8 million years ago until about 11,700 years ago, there have been huge fluctuations in temperatures, giving rise to cold periods or glacials and warm periods known as interglacials. Um, it's been estimated there's been about eight interglacial periods at least and eight glacial periods um, in the last one million years. Currently, ice covers about 10% of the Earth's surface, and during these glacial periods, ice has extended to over 30% of the Earth's surface. And during this time, sea levels fall because so much water is locked up as ice on the land. So, for example, 20,000 years ago, sea levels fell by 120 metres. Now, if we have a look at one of these glacial periods, so this was the situation about 18,000 years ago, the ice coverage has extended from the North Pole southwards and the ice coverage has extended from the South Pole um, northwards. If we have a, a zoom in on the area of Europe, we can see that 18,000 years ago, lots of um, North and Western England were covered in ice. Scotland was totally covered under this ice sheet, um, as was Northern Ireland. Scandinavia was covered in ice and much of Northern Europe was covered in ice. So if we go into the past, um, the distribution of cold environments has varied according to whether it's been a glacial or an interglacial period. In the rest of this presentation, we're going to be having a look at the physical characteristics of these modern day cold environments to include climate, soils and vegetation. Let's take a look at the climate of these cold environments. All cold environments have significant periods of time when temperatures are close to or significantly below freezing. There's very little liquid water in these areas because it's ice or snow. Um, snowfall can vary enormously. You get very little precipitation at all in the polar environments, whereas at coastal and mountainous areas, you can get a lot of snowfall. And there's often strong winds in these cold environments because they're mountains or because you've got um, large areas for the wind to pick up speed. And this adds wind chill. And all of these conditions limit the development of soil and vegetation. Let, let's have a look at why it's so cold, so dry and so windy at the North Pole and the South Pole. Firstly, the very low level of insulation. Um, because the sunshine is overhead at the equator, it means the sun remains very low in the sky um, at both of the poles. So the poles get a much less concentrated dose of the sun's rays, and so it is a lot colder. Secondly, with so much snow and ice, it reflects um, the, the incoming solar radiation because of the white colour, um, and as a result, it stays cooler. Thirdly, um, the North Pole and South Polar Pole are high pressure areas and sinking air leads to little or no precipitation forming and that's why it's so dry. Fourthly, the air is so cool, 
bubbled air can only hold low levels of water vapour, so you get very little precipitation, often rarely more than light powdery snow. And finally, um, it's so windy in Antarctica because these masses of cold, dense air flow down the valleys unobstructed, and it's possible for the winds to reach over 200 kilometres per hour. So soils in cold environments. All soils are, are weathered rock, rotted organic matter, living organisms, gases and water, but they struggle to form in cold environments. Why is this? Um, weathering is limited due to the lack of liquid water. Um, there's a lack of vegetation in these areas, so there's little organic matter. And finally, there's very few decomposers or fungi and bacteria. And that means that there aren't the weathered rock or the living organisms um, or the water required to create our soil. As a result, soil formation is very slow. Um, soils are thin and acidic. They're mostly frozen and they're blue-grey in colour. In periglacial areas, um, you have the permafrost, the permanently frozen ground. Above this, you have the area of ground that thaws in summer, creating ponds and lakes, and that's known as the active layer. Um, it forms because the permafrost prevents downward drainage, and so the active layer becomes saturated and boggy. Next, we'll have a look at the vegetation of cold environments. We'll start with polar and glacial areas, and there's very little vegetation at all. Sometimes you get lichen on rock, but if you imagine the coldest ever temperature of minus 89 degrees centigrade was recorded in Antarctica, it's just too cold for plants to exist. Furthermore, there's very little soil or no soil at all, and so um, very sparse vegetation coverage. Next, we have the periglacial environments. Um, these areas are treeless, but they do have low growing plants, such as mosses, lichens, sedges, dwarf shrubs. Um, all the plants in these areas are very well adapted to life here. For example, they have small waxy leaves to retain warmth and reduce water loss. They flower and set seed in just a few weeks of the summer months. They must have shallow roots and the seeds are armoured with a thick seed case. If we then move to alpine environments, the mountainous areas, um, lots of them enjoy warm, wet summers, and so very good conditions for soil formation and plant growth. Um, many high alpine med meadows have tremendous biodiversity, especially in the summer. This final page is a summary of everything that we've covered um, with a little bit more detail included. Um, it shows you where these cold environments are, what their landscapes are like, and the climate, soils, and vegetation.